Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Roads of Oz. My name is Matt and we're at Phillip Island. So the bike's been all screwed in here, and this is one of my bucket lists, so it passed. So she's ready to go. I had to take all the gear off from the touring. So looking forward to it. Now they now my the first time here. They did do a great induction and uh, we're gonna get a score around the first time, so just to show us good um, good laps and to show you some good lines to take. Um, on the track, so I'm really looking forward to that. After the second lap, we left our own devices and we'll find a way at the moment. Um, looks like medium fast groups going out, so I better start getting ready because I'm up next. Hi, my name's Matt. This is my 2015 Moto Guzzi Grisso, and I'll be taking it on a bucket list item of mine, and that is riding around Tasmania. Now, on the way down, we're going to look at some great roads through New South Wales and Victoria, and also do another bucket list of mine, and that's ride Phillip Island. Anyway, stick around. I'll be reviewing all the roads using the HEMA Maps Top 200 roads and actually seeing if they're still relevant. And on the way down, I'll be checking out some interesting places along the way. I'll be sharing with you the highs, the lows of the trip, and everything in between. So actually getting to go out on the track for the first time, I was actually really excited about it and also a touch nervous. Now the good thing is you get to do a lap following an instructor around, which just gives you an idea of the good lines, just what to expect going around, which is absolutely brilliant, especially us for us first timers. Now coming up to the um, pit lane exit, you'll see there's a white line at the end there. Do not cross it. If you cross it, the marshal to your right is going to spot you, black flag you, and then you're going to have to go back into the pits. Crossing that line can put you in a bit of danger too because um, that's the straight and people are coming down at, a, at quite a rapid rate. All right, so after doing a nice lap around, they did warn us not to go too fast. On your second lap around, you get tires a chance to warm up. Do you think I listened? Absolutely not, and almost pinned it here at a moment. But once the tides warmed up, I started to get into it. Now, the first session was probably my slowest, and throughout the day, the more sessions I'd done, the more confident I became, the faster I got. Now, sadly, I didn't film the last session, I actually ran out of battery, but I'm going to show you my, one of my better laps, and you have to apologise the camera set up, because I had the screen, I actually had to use the, um, the extendable arm, I can't remember what it's called from GoPro, but it does get a bit shaky, but all in all, I can't recommend this experience enough. It, the bucket list item of mine, I've ticked it off. Would I do it again? Absolutely, it is so much fun. And you don't need a sports bike to do it, although you can hire a BMW. I reckon that'd be pretty fun hiring a BMW S1000R, I think it is. Full on race bike, amazing machine. But I stuck with my mighty Grisso, and there's only three times I've actually felt that the Grisso's felt want, um, lacking power, and all three of those have been track days, so three days in seven years, I've got nothing to complain about. Now, there was a moment where there was a yellow flag, and I was thinking, oh, someone's come down. No, it was just that there was ducks on the road, so just be careful. Being on Phillip Island, there's a lot of um, bird life, and sadly, sometimes they get on the track and get skittled. So if you've got a chance to do Phillip Island, I suggest you do it. It is so much fun. And also, it's a, a track used by MotoGP riders. And after doing a few laps on it, you realise it, why it's one of their favourite tracks to run. Anyway, that's pretty much it from me. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, give it a like. Hit the share button, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel massively. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid.
All right, so I'm going to start on the straight and you're going to come down here at a rate of knots. Now you can get well over 200 kilometres an hour and even I was able to manage this on the grit. This session I wasn't able to because I would chicken out because coming up to the straight I'd panic because I couldn't see then I'd back off. Now coming up to the first right hander you can take that at a 120 plus easy. Um, it's a nice flowing bend and set you up nicely for the left hander that we're about to come up to. Now this left hander just goes on and on and on. You will scrape pegs here if you hook it down too far, but let it push the bike wide so you can take the next left hander at a much higher speed. So coming up here, this is this high, one of the fastest corners. You go into it about, as I said, I was doing about 135. Problem is the next corner is really slow, so you're really on the anchors. Now, if you do screw up, you can go straight and that will take you back to the pits and you can rejoin the track later on. But as you can see, I'm not going too fast around it. You can on, get on the accelerator again and take off. And again, it's another corner that just feels like it keeps going and going. But you're coming to the back of the track. Now here you can really get up it and really hold the gas on and just keep accelerating. Even through the bend, you can bring yourself around nicely. Then you're gonna take the right. You don't have to back off too much, even though I do. And you're gonna come up to another left-hander. Now, as you're going over this left-hander, you're not gonna be able to see the, the track and it breaks off to the right. And just getting confidence, knowing that the track's there, it take, took me a while to get used to that. Here, you're on the brakes and if your tyres are cold, you've got to be very careful. This is where the bike gets a bit squirrely under cold tyres, and especially if the track's cold. You're coming up to the last left-hander that brings you onto the straight, and it just keeps going as well. You want to get up as much speed as possible, so when you're onto the straight, you're already doing well into the hundreds, and that will, that will propel you straight down the track. Anyway, that was my lap, one of my many laps. I thought I'd share this one with you. As you can see, the bike's going past me. It's the only time I really wanted a sports bike is when stuff like that happens. That's more an ego-driven thing. Anyway, the beauty of the track day is also you don't have to worry about sun glare getting on the, on the speedometer, but I've got all the telemetry up here for you.